Praise be Jesus Christ. Dear lovers of the Word of God, welcome to Anbinhi. We are now on the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, the liturgy helps us to understand what's in the heart of Jesus. That is, a heart which has faith in mankind and looking always for his good. Let us now listen to Father Raymond Soto as he shares with us the heart of the Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform a mighty deed, any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord My dear brothers and sisters, we have heard Jesus visiting his native place. Kung haaton pa yan ay Kristo, bagan, binmalik nga ito, halugar nga din hiya nagtubo. And it is very much the same experience with all Filipinos who studied abroad or who works abroad and they return to their native place. When Jesus returned to his native place, his attention was caught by many. Just like some people who work abroad and when they get back home, their attention are also cold. One day, our Lord Jesus taught in their synagogue, but he met with suspicious persons, hostile look, and some are cynical. The reposition was based on the fact that he was too transparent to them. They knew him very much. They knew him as the son of a carpenter. They could not accept this. They even know their cousin. They even know his family. They even know that they are just ordinary people. His family is just an ordinary family like us. And now is he telling and posing himself as a prophet and a teacher? That is why the people were complaining to him. People were giving him a hostile look and in their heart were full of criticism. They could not accept this reality. They could not accept that the Messiah that they are waiting for is just a son of a carpenter, a simple and ordinary carpenter. They believe that the Messiah is coming from an unknown source. That is why they said, where did this man get all this? Jesus, being true God and true man, sensed their negativity. That is why Jesus said, No prophet is accepted in his own country. If you listen in the first reading in the book of Samuel, it says, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man sees God see, 
because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. It is easy for us to judge the person by seeing his appearance, but our Lord sees the heart of all. If we accept this or not, then I could say that we are just like the Pharisees who have a sickness which they called Himan. Himan Tayun. We easily judge the people by the way they look and the way they appear to us externally. That is why some of us, or even now, before I started this taping, the look is very important. And most of us, no, we buy skincare products, Eskinol, lipsticks, baby powder. Why? To make us appear good. Because appearance is what makes appreciate the people. But Christ is asking us today that appearance is not only important. What is more important are the Christian values that we have. The virtue of simplicity, the virtue of authenticity, and most especially, sincerity. Do not make your pride reign in your heart. Rather, our Lord wants us to be cheerful, not only of the things we present to other people externally, but to be cheerful deep inside in our heart, ready to give a helping hand and a comforting word. When you hear an unkind remark, like many things that we have heard in the mass media, what is our attitude? When you have been the object of an abuse, when you feel your grievance must be revenge, control your temper and stay calm. I have a very good friend, priest, Monsignor Lito Maraya, who shared with me this morning, that we Christians, our mission here on earth is to make heaven here on earth. To make heavens here on earth. And that is to eliminate hunger, to give hope to those people feel that there is no hope, to give love, to give water to those who are thirsty. And I think this is the message of Christ. And I think this is what we should do as Christians. It is making heavens here on earth. If possible, avoid explaining your side while your neighbor is still in an irritated mood. Why try to build a castle when the storm is raging? Nice things do not happen always. Like the day when shines or rains at times, there are unwholesome matters that come unpredictably in our way. We must face the situation with a big heart and a broad mind. When I say big heart, we should never forget that inside that word heart, if we take away the H and the letter T, there is an ear. We should learn to listen. The ear is for listening and the heart has an ear willing to listen to the needs of other people. That is why I would like to invite you that loving is, needs listening. But to listen, to listen, we must have faith. That is why loving without faith is impossible. And faith without love is unacceptable. It is because the love of God, it is the heart of our Christian religion. Even people mock at us, ridiculed us, we can still love them. It is only when we love Christ that we can submit our will to His designs. It is possible to reach God only with our love in our hearts. So let us, not, let us look not with the appearance, because that is deceiving, but we have to look the person using our heart, listening the person 
using the ear of our heart, it is surely a win. My dear brothers and sisters, our Blessed Virgin Mary always listened using His heart to the needs of other people, and most especially, listening using her heart, loving her Son, even at the foot of the cross. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, deliver us from the deceptions of the ego mind and keep us sensitive to the gentle stirrings of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Amen. Thank you, Father Raymond, for your inspiring reflection. Also, thanks to our sisters and brothers in faith. Let us strive to see what is in the heart of a person rather than what is obvious on the surface. Sisters and brothers, may God bless us all. Your river runs with love